You are listening to the Starter Girls Podcast with Jennifer Loading. Whether you are starting a project, starting a business, starting a brand, or starting a movement, we are here to talk about it. We're going to get this thing started. Today is a great day to be brave. You might as well start now. You have the power to change your circumstances any day you decide. Let today be that day. Rise up. Be amazing. Be you. Do you. All right, my friends. I'm super excited. Welcome, my guest, Mo Brissett, to the Starter Girls podcast. Welcome. Thank you. Super excited to have you here. So I want to tell our listeners a little bit about you so they know who we're talking to and listening to. So Mo is an expert on human behavior, mindset, movement, and nutrition. He's a keynote speaker on fear and human potential. He works with companies and teaches individuals how to reach their professional and personal goals and overcome limiting beliefs using fear as their tool for success. Mo has been in the health and fitness industry for 24 years and is currently the director of mindset at the Adaptive Training Foundation. This Dallas-based nonprofit leads disabled military veterans and civilians through a nine-week mental and physical training program called Redefine. Through this powerful program, Mo inspires adaptive athletes to overcome physical, emotional, and mental pain, fear, and self-doubt. I love this. <laughs> so welcome. Thank I'm you. super excited to chat with you. We're going to be like yeah. in all kinds of stuff Let's here. Let's go. So, Let's get in it. Yeah. So what I want to know, you're going to have to like take me through this. So okay. how did this come about for you? Like, how did you get into this? The The mindset piece of it? Yeah, let's start with that yeah. first. Let's start with that first because I think that's huge. Right. I think that is probably the biggest part of what you're having to do is oh, work with that. So yeah. let's get into that's that. The, well, that's the that's the crux of what we are as humans, right? You can have the best workout program, you right. can have the best training plan, you can have the best sales approach, but if your mindset isn't right and you, if your language to yourself isn't what you need it to be, if it's not strong, affirming, the plan's useless. I, I'm in my background is in exercise science, kinesiology, holistic okay. nutrition. I've been practicing all those things for over 24 years now. And I, I, I'm also an endurance athlete and I coach endurance athletes. So I used to race 24 hour distance adventure races, 100 mile mountain bike races, ultra marathons, and triathlons. And when I was coaching triathlons, specifically Ironman, that's where I really discovered the power of the mind in that you can have the best race plan on the planet. Your nutrition could be dialed in, but if something goes wrong in the race and you're not mm-hmm. mentally prepared for it, it's game over. So what I would do is, and I learned this is before a month before the race started, I would have my clients start to visualize everything on that day, literally from the time the alarm went off until the time they crossed the finish line. And I'll have them visualize what could go wrong in the swim. Now work through all that stuff. How will you process that mentally. What's the words you're going to use? And, and then what are you going to do to solve that problem? Then do the same thing for the bike, same thing for the run. What do you do if you cramp? What do you do if you get nauseous? And have them problem solve so that by the time they get to the race, they've done it so many times in their head that if a problem does arise, mm-hmm. they know how to, it's it's automatic. It's subconscious. You know, it's like touching a hot stove. Right. We don't, we just instinctually right. pull our hand back. Right. So that's what that's about. And so I did that with endurance athletes. And then when I started working with the Adaptive Training Foundation and our adaptive athletes, we really weren't doing a whole lot of mindset work. We were doing a lot of the physical training, helping these military veterans and civilians really learn how to use their bodies again. And you know, taking them for as they are and who they are and showing them that you're a complete person, regardless of how many limbs you're missing or if you're confined to a wheelchair. Right. So, and we were doing great things in that realm. What happened though is it's it's like church camp, right? You get around the the like-minded people, you're excited, you're good to go. Well, when you leave and you go back to your home, if you have a spouse that you might not get along with, or you have PTS from trauma, Mm -hmm. specifically battle and war trauma, that's when the that's when the demons kick in, right? Mm -hmm. So what happened was one of our athletes, one of our veterans, a Marine, we came back from a really cool trip and he got into an argument with his wife on the phone. Okay. And this gentleman had tried to take his life four times already. Wow. And he called our founder and said, Hey man, I can't do this soon anymore. I'm out and racked around in his, in his nine millimeter. and was about to take his life. And we were able to get him into a treatment facility that night and save his life. And from that, two of our other veterans that was same week said, Hey, we're not good either. So we all rallied together and like, man, we've got to do something about this. And I had been studying mindset. I had been studying uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza, Deepak Chopra and, and thing in those guys and the realm of positive psychology and neuroscience. And I said, you know what? I got this. I love, here's what we're going to do. We're going to, we'll, and we'll start this program. And we added the mindset component to what we do in our foundation and with our athletes. And that really shifted the paradigm into how we're able to advance our treatment 
of these individuals because again like you could get, you have the best workout program on the planet but if you're not taking care of what's between the ears mm -hmm. in that those those dark times and really allowing yourself the space to be angry to be mad to be sad to feel those emotions and then work with them not in spite of them then you're able to really flourish and find out who you're supposed to be and reach the goals that you're intended to, to reach so that's that's how it all came about Okay. And then from that, I take that into the, the the business world, the corporate world, and really just individuals and help them understand that, look, what I'm doing with these individuals, is it's, it's nothing special. It's just the truth. And we all have this potential. You know, it's whether or not you are really willing to go into those emotions and say, hey, look, I'm in charge of it. Like what you said at the beginning, you make the day. Mm -hmm. Right. No one can make you mad. No one can make you upset. Mm -hmm. You choose that. Right. There's an event that happens and then there's your response, either good or bad. Right. So that's long way of saying what I do. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, my gosh. I'm just listening to I have so many things to add to this. So yeah. many things I want to say this. First of all, I understand the endurance athlete part. I am married to an endurance athlete. So yes. he is he's done like twenty five hundred mile races. I right. have been in that that space. And so I mm -hmm. get the mind. It's I, mental. I, I, I've watch that so mm -hmm. i can understand where that would that would have played an immense part in what you're doing and yeah. everything and i agree with you a hundred percent that it's the mindset and in fact the show that we did right before this we were talking about that mm -hmm. how you know when people are trying to heal themselves if they want to get better if they if they go into a situation and they think they're not going to get better they're not going to get better because right. they've already decided they're not going to get better and i don't know if i shared this with you but i have a condition called trigeminal neuralgia which is a mm -hmm. rare nerve condition in my face and it's very difficult to treat they labeled it a suicide disease because it is it's just it's immensely painful but it's very difficult to treat one of the things that i wrote in my book the the very i the first chapter was that story what i learned going through it mm -hmm. but the second chapter was about making decisions yeah and Every, people ask me all the time, they're like, what, do you, what did you do? Well, if I want to say what I specifically did, I did a ketogenic diet for 22 months. That's what I did. I changed yeah. my diet. Yeah. But there was more to it than that. There mm -hmm. was, I did meditation. You yeah. know, there were all these things. But at the end of the day, it was, I made the decision to heal myself. I made the decision that I didn't want to be a victim. Mm -hmm. I made the decision that... I couldn't continue living that way because I didn't want to be on medication. I didn't want to be in pain. I didn't want my kids to witness that for the yeah. you know for the rest of my life. So it was really about me just deciding, you know, I may not be 100% yeah. better and I'm not. I'm not 100%, right. but I'm going to be better than I was and mm -hmm. I've been. I've been off my medication since 2017 and I've been pain free for the most Absolutely. part. So and I take care of that. So it's really about being mindful and all that. So I love what you're doing. I think that is so incredible. And I'm sure you and I have a lot of, we know some same people in our circles, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which I think is so cool. What do you, okay, so tell me what I guess, and, and I probably don't even need to ask this question, but I think our listeners are going to want to know this. What is the best part about what you get to do? Like, what is it that brings the, the like fire to oh you? Oh my gosh. Man, it's obviously when I'm working with the adaptive population in our foundation, when you have someone that comes in and a doctor has said, you're never going to walk again, and they believe that, and then we can show them how that is not really true, and that individual can walk again within a nine-week period, um, it, it that's, I mean, that it doesn't get better than that. Right. When you give someone life back, yeah, there's nothing that tops that. Right. You can't pay me enough money to, to top what I'm able to share with those yeah. individuals. And, and even working with with people that, that don't have disabilities i was on the phone with a client yesterday who is who is she's an executive she is high up in her company she runs teams and she was we we're talking about her goals and we're two weeks into our program together and she's like i'm having self-confidence issues you know she said i've got this this team that i'm leading and this thing and that thing but i don't feel good about myself and so yeah. By the end of our conversation, helping her work with with language and the words she used, and also helping her understand that it's okay to feel that way, mm -hmm. and just listening to her realize that, and the change in her voice, the change in her tone. I mean, I got off the phone and I I looked at my girlfriend and said, I could do this all day. Yeah. I, I love doing this stuff, and that's what it's about. When when I'm able to share what I know mm -hmm. to give them, because I'm not fixing it. Like you didn't, you right. fix you. I'm right. not doing anything with the people that I work with, but giving them an opportunity to show themselves that they have the power to heal. Mm -hmm. They have the power to change. And when I see that, oh my God, it's that's why I do what I do. Like yeah. you, There's nothing else I'm going to be doing because of the power of 
mind and the power of positive self-talk and language. Mm -hmm. I love it. Oh my gosh, yeah. I'm getting excited. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you are so passionate. I love well, it. I mean, no, listen, I was watching, you know who John Maxwell is? Yeah. Okay, so I, I love him. I love following him. I, I He is so like, no fluff. It's all just there. You hear what you need to hear. So this morning, yeah. you know, I, one of the things I, when I coach people, I talk about these seven things that I do. And one of the things I talk about is reading. Um, and, and to tell you that story, in 2018, after I had come through my health crisis, you know, any and, and you probably witnessed this with people that when they go through something devastating, they go through this like depression afterwards. It's like mm -hmm. when you come out, it's like you have, for me, it was, I lost four years of my life. I missed four years of my children and my life was turned upside down and I survived this. So I had this moment of glory that I solved this problem, but then there was this, oh my goodness, I missed all this time. And so I was sitting in this conference in 2018 and I was in, you know, I'm at this event. I didn't want to be there and I'm like hating on my life. And I'm like, okay, everybody from the outside in is looking at me and going, okay, this girl's run marathon. She survived a disease. She's been successful in business, like done all these things. And like internally, I was a hot mess, like right. talking about confidence, all this mm -hmm stuff a mess and the speaker gets up there and i can't tell you much about this event because i was not wanting to be there but right. she gets up there and she's talking about john maxwell and she's like there's these five things you do and if you do them for a year your life will never be the same and, and you pick what they are and i'm like okay well i know how to do this i exercise i eat right that's not anything i gotta worry mm -hmm. about what else can i do and i'm like you know what I hate reading. Like I absolutely hated reading. And my excuse always was because I didn't feel like I had the time mm. to sit down for myself to do that, right? Yeah. Now I believe 100%. Personal self, like self-development, self-care needs to be number one. First. It needs to be first. Yes. Then you do the other. Yes. So <laughs> I decided that day, I'm like, you know what? I almost did this as an experiment to like mm -hmm. prove it wrong, to say it wasn't going to yeah. work. But I'm like, you know, I'm going to try this. So I, that was January, 2018. Mm -hmm. I've read pretty much every day since that time. Right. That I was probably the the biggest thing I did because it created a shift in my thinking and it allowed me to go from seeing things negatively to being over here and seeing possibility. And so mm -hmm. I, when I coach my people all the time, I tell them the number one thing is, what are you listening to? What are you reading? Like mm -hmm. you need to be doing that every day. And so today I was listening to John Maxwell and he was talking about passion and he said, there's no such thing as low energy, high energy people. When you see high energy people, it's because they're passionate. Mm -hmm. And so I always get told by everybody, oh. like I'm this high energy person and I am, it's because I get excited about yeah. what I'm doing. Yeah. I love what I do and that gets me fired and up. And that's the day. energy people understand, get and want to be around because I, I told, I had this revelation at a retreat with, with my good friend who was the founder of our, our foundation. And because we both speak on behalf of the foundation, we do speaking as well. And I'm like, man, look, the knowledge that we have is awesome, but it is useless without the passion that comes with it. 100%. You know, because you could have, you, you, you have, we've all had a teacher, right? They're, yeah. they're smart as a whip, but right. they start talking there. You're like, you're like, whoa. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but they when, just stand there. So yeah. they walk in, you like, you know, it's over. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah and it's exactly. But it's, okay. it's that, it's the fire that's in you that you can't teach that. Like you can't teach. Mm, no, I, I, I agree. I and agree. And that's why I'm so passionate about getting this message out, about getting people comfortable with fear, with anxiety, with worry. And what I was talking to my client about, I'm like, listen, nothing's wrong with you. Right. You're, you're, you're feeling the exact same thing everybody feels. They have this facade and they put this front on, but almost everyone inside, they're self-conscious and unhappy about something. Mm -hmm. So we're going to alter that, but understand that you are just like everyone else and you're not alone and it's okay. So how we do that is working is, is getting building a relationship with those fears, right. with the anxiety, with the worry, and then asking yourself questions and using it instead of getting mad at yourself. Like you know, one of the things I love to say, and I, I didn't make this quote, I, I wish I did, but it's how long would you be friends with someone that talked to you the way that you talk to yourself? Right. Right. Think yeah. about that. Yeah. You know, and I say that to when I when I when I speak to the the C suites and the executives, I'm like, how long would you employ someone that spoke to you the way that you speak and treat yourself because right. you're like we don't take care of ourselves yeah especially mothers right i right. gotta take care of the kids i gotta take care of this right. that's the label that you give yourself that's your role but your main role is taking care of you first mm -hmm. if it's five minutes in the morning yeah that's perfect but start with something for you right and then you can be the best version for the rest of the population i love all that and you're and it is it's so true and i think you know people it's almost like when people say they don't have time to do these things. I almost come back with it. You don't really 
then that's why you need to do those things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's you really need to, yeah. yeah I don't you have need time to do, to do these. Let me show to, you how you do have time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because it's so important to everything else that's going on mm -hmm. in your life. And you can't, it's, it's, I, I talk about like, you, you said so many things, the labels, we were talking about that in the other podcast. I talk about that mm -hmm. in my book labels, you know, people define themselves and they, even with conditions, they'll All say, right. I am this a just how I, I am. Yeah. I, I'm OCD or I have anxiety and they be, that becomes who they are instead of, no, mm -hmm. I have a condition and I can choose to work around that if I want to, or right. I can be a victim to it, you know? So I agree with you hundred percent on that. And I think the fear thing, you said it really something neat in there about, we all have that we do. And, and mm -hmm. I think that the cool thing about what you're doing and, and I kind of do the same thing is I tell people, you know, these things that come up for us, they're real. We're not mm -hmm. invalidating. We have them and it's okay. It's not your fault. You yeah. have them. It's not your fault that you have them. Your job is to be mindful and figure out how you sneak around those right. things. You know, like what how is, are we going to get around And them? one is not bigger than the other. Right. You know, what it was, if something traumatizes me, it could be a spider. Yeah. That doesn't diminish that for, right. my, for me. And whatever traumatizes you, whatever you're afraid of, right. doesn't diminish it for anything for you. Right. right. So right. And that's where some people say that, like, oh, I don't have it as bad as that person. What, right. you, how do you know that? Exactly. Have you, have you asked exactly, them? Exactly. Right. <laughs> have you walked in their shoes? <laughs> Is this paralyzing you? <laughs> yes. Then you do. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and it's okay. Let's talk about it. Let's, let's, let's work with it yeah. instead of around it. And let's, let's use this thing to make you stronger and better. I love this. Yeah. I love it. So much good stuff here. I have a feeling we could talk forever about this stuff. Fear is such a crazy thing with a lot of people. I yeah. mean, and it's, you're right. It's so different for everybody and you'll have, you'll have somebody. And, and it's kind of why I do this podcast the way I do it, because when I created this, the whole idea was, you know, I think I told you a little bit about my background, having worked with women, you know, mm -hmm. I was trying to teach, and this was something I personally wrestled with. I was trying to teach women how to be entrepreneurs, how to run a business. Right. Problem I kept running into was that these women loved the idea of being an entrepreneur, but they weren't mentally ready to be an entrepreneur. Mm, yes. And I've always kind of, I'm a very task-oriented person. So the, the funny part of that is I get along with men very well because I'm very focused and task-oriented. I can keep moving. Right, I don't right. let emotion get in the way of my work. Yeah. I can I can turn that off. Women are very, a lot of times, they deal with a lot of that stuff. And so when I was working with them, I would always find that when they would come to me with all this stuff, I'd be like, well, we just get over it. We just go. Let's go. I'm ready to go. Let's go. Let's go. You know, because that's yeah. how my brain would work. Yeah. And so I realized that, you know, there was a lot more to that, mm -hmm. but I had to go through that personal journey for myself to figure out and find that empathy mm -hmm. and find that compassion and be able to find out that, hey, you know, there's more to this. It, the eye opening for that was that I realized in that business that the things I loved, yeah. you know, where my strengths were, were helping people win, helping people see the, the big picture or like, how are we going to get across that finish line? I didn't like the minutia. And right. so I realized that I needed to remove myself from that because all that mm -hmm. other building stuff didn't want to do. So it was, a, it was a big opening for me to really segue into something that I'm passionate about. And, and that's the thing. I really, like you, I feel like when you can get to the bottom of those those fears, which a lot of times are, are just common things, for, same things for everybody. People mm -hmm. don't want to be taken advantage of. People want to be vulnerable. They right. don't want to be criticized. They want to be liked, loved, whatever. And how do we look at that and say, you know, it's okay that you have this, but now we're going to, we're going to negate that. We're going to prove that you can get around this and we're going to build mm -hmm. your confidence. And that's, I think where this immense growth comes. Yeah. And that's when I think too, you can learn to talk to yourself in a different place. You know, instead of, instead yeah. of, you know, I, I joke about this. Like I've, I've said this several times on the podcast. When I first created the podcast, like every time I do a recording, I'd go in the room and right after I'd be like, oh, that was awful. Why did I say that? Why am I standing there? Why am I looking like that? You know what I mean? Like we do. Yeah. And, but now I laugh at myself. And I made a joke about this. I even put a post up. I said, watch one of my videos and listen how many times I say that's awesome and I love it. Like right. count them because yeah. that comes out of my <laughs> mouth all the time. Like I love it. Um, that's awesome. Right. You know? And so I laugh about it. So it's a very different a mindset for me. Now I look at it and I'm thinking, Hey, like this is kind of a cool thing. I'm talking. Yeah, we're and human. You're going to, you're not, we're not going to exactly, be perfect. It's not exactly. scripted, right? You're, right. you're going to say what you say and then it might come out great and it might not. And that's but, okay. And it's fine. Yeah, exactly. And it's great to show people the human side of right. you and of things and to let everyone know that, look, I mean, I go through this a lot. I go through struggles and yeah. it's about allowing yourself to go through those and allowing yourself to not be perfect. Right. You know, because that's... <laughs> I'm, I'm a perfectionist. If it's not this way, I'm not going to do it. Right. Okay. Well, that's usually just, that's usually just an excuse of not wanting to deal with something else. Yeah. So, right. you know, it's, it's funny. And, and you mentioned language, right? You mentioned people that, that they make the decision if I can't do this, 
Well, even if you, and that's where the, the words are so powerful, because even if you say it in a way where you're like, you know what, I'm training for a marathon. I can't run 26 miles yet. Well, if you say I can't run 26 I've, miles yet, what do you think your body's going to do? How do you think it's going to physiologically respond? Exactly. Because what you think you literally become. Yep. So what you say instead is, I am working on running a marathon. Tomorrow, I'm going to run four miles and I'm going to do this. And, I'm, and then, you, then you list the things that you're going to do and what you can do. Right. We had one of our athletes that we worked with. Uh, he was paralyzed and he was working on uh, tactile and mm. having fine motor skills and being able to hold a pencil and a fork, et cetera. And he said, hey, you know, I'm, I'm working on this. I can't quite hold the fork yet. I can't quite hold the pencil yet, but I'm working on these things. And I said, hey, I get it. That's awesome. I want you to change that narrative a little bit. I yeah. want you to think of it this way. Instead of saying what you can't do, I want you to tell me the exercises that you are doing that are going to get you to be able to hold that pen and fork. And he looked awesome. at me and said, oh, that makes sense. Yeah, because yeah. when you think about it that way, then you're, then my fingers know what to do, right? right? Because if, if I'm holding this bottle yeah. or I'm not holding this bottle, but I'm closing my eyes and I'm visualizing that bottle, how it feels, the tactile cues, where my thumb is on the sticker versus the bottle and how it feels different, my brain really thinks I'm holding the bottle. Yeah. So therefore, my body is going to create the neural firing right. patterns to do that. It's the same thing in business. Before you go into a meeting, before you get on a sales call, before you talk to your friend that you really don't want to talk to, right? right. right? So it's all in the language that we use uh -huh. and what you want to get out of those things. And that's the that's the that's the magic. When I get people to to journal on a daily basis mm -hmm. and work in affirmations and solid affirming language, mm -hmm. it's a game changer. It's oh, awesome. It's so I good. can I literally see and it's fun because I'll I'll read some of their journal entries. What I do, I have them send this to it's a non-negotiable. Every morning, I get a journal entry from you from the day okay, before. awesome. And I can see them literally working out their issues and using negating words like can't, don't, won't, shouldn't, couldn't, et cetera. And then they'll stop and they'll fix it. And they'll yes, stop. yes. And I'm like, this. this is so good. I do this with my people too. I talk about affirmations and I do the negating because mm -hmm. that is a lot of people, they don't really realize like they're, you know, they're writing something out and they're, they don't even, it, it, for you and I, it's like, we've learned this. So it's like, we don't even think anything of it. It's kind of like, right. you know, I always say, if you're struggling with happy and you're not, if you're, if you're in all that cannot reside in the same place as gratitude. Right. So if you're finding that you have a lot of anxiety and fear, we've got to start working on gratitude. And and I'm all about celebrating small wins. I, you know, I'm, I'm a consistency person. <laughs> even you Obviously, if you do running and all that, you got to yeah, learn consistency. Yeah. So I'm a very disciplined, consistent person. And so even with my people, I, you know, I talk about small changes and stuff, but that language is the most important thing because when they are writing those things out, like I will, I will have them go back and negate stuff. Like if they're these resonating thoughts that are coming up, you know, mm -hmm. these subconscious thoughts that come up because you're right, everything's a thought first and then right. it becomes an action. So whatever you're thinking is going to happen. And true story, you know, if somebody wakes up and they say, I'm tired, that's how you're going to show up. They're tired all day. Mm -hmm. Like until they made the conscious decision to say, I am no longer tired. I'm yeah. excited. They stay that way all mm -hmm. day long. And so I am with you on the affirmations and the wording and all of that. I think it's it's 100%. So I want to kind of ask you some more questions because we could be here forever talking about this. Who would you say has been your greatest influencers? Hmm. I would say uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza. Absolutely. For sure. Okay. Um, <clears throat> He's been a big one. Uh, Deepak Chopra is one of the originals. That's where I really started to dive into mindset and finding out, you know, exactly what, how he got into mindset yeah. from his medical background. So those two guys, for sure. Um, who are my other influencers? Now I'm drawing a blank to you ask this question. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's like all um, of a sudden got to think. Yeah, I know. So, I li well, I, I listen to so many audiobooks, yeah. but honestly, those two guys are the two that really I focused on because when I when I read the placebo effect and breaking the habit of being yourself, that that's what sealed the deal for me. I'm, it, it, it's it's concrete scientific evidence of what the human body is capable of doing yeah. when you have the right mindset and you put your mind to it. And Crazy. that's so Dr. Joe Dispenza is like top of the list for me. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah it's so, it's so huge. So I know with all this stuff we have going on in the cl current climate situation, are you, st so are you still running actively now? Do you still Absolutely. do? Absolutely. Yeah, I, I do. I work, I'm not doing, I'm doing something called tactical games Okay. and I'm training for, uh, I think I saw that. I think yeah. I saw some of your pictures yeah. on that. So, so it's, fun. it's, it's fun. It's, it's stressful. It's the most high stress thing I've ever done because you have to, be able to lift heavy things with a weighted vest on. You have to shoot a weapon with your heart rate maxed out and you have to count, which I'm not good at. <laughs> Rather, I am working on being That's better right. at counting. You, you got exactly. it. You got it. <laughs> so I'm doing that. And I'm training for this uh, this Go Ruck event that's going to be in December 
which has a less than 2% pass rate. And okay. when I finish it, I'll be the oldest person to complete it. That's so awesome. You'll yeah. do it. You got it. You'll do it. You've done enough yeah. stuff now. I, You know, there's something... I, you know, we had, I had Zach Bitter and Nicole, his wife, Nicole on here mm -hmm. one time there, you know, being in that environment with endurance athletes, it's just a very, you know, I think there's even a difference. Like I know runners in both, you know, in marathon racing and that, and then I know these endurance athletes and mm -hmm. I just always feel like they, those endurance athletes are just a different breed of people. Like they just have, yes, it's mine. different. I mean, yeah. you know, I know when my husband came, I interviewed him on one of the shows and he was talking about, I can't remember this last race he did, this last hundred mile. At one point he was talking about while he was out there. He had hit, it was the middle of the night, and this was probably one of his slower races. I mean, he's done like Rocky Raccoon, and he's mm -hmm. he's actually, um, he's placed very, I mean, he did very well yeah. running. Um, you know, this was, he's been running for a long time now, right. so we're older now. It's not quite as easy. <laughs> <laughs> but this last one he did, he was telling this story about how in the middle of the night, he like started like kind of falling asleep and like he was starting to see little Minecraft things on the, on the, you know, oh, and, yeah. and at that time I had a co-host on the show and we were, she was looking at me. I'm like, yeah, this is normal. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is what it's like. Yeah. So, um, I, I do think they're just a different, a different kind of, you know, the, the mindset, they've just got incredible mindset, but um, I, I think it's awesome what you're doing. And I've seen some of the pictures on the tactical thing. So that looks, it, I, I can imagine that's very intense, but yeah. um, it led me back to what you were saying earlier about putting people in that mindset of what's the worst case scenario and yeah. you work through that. So that if something comes up, you know, you know how to mm -hmm. do, get through it. Yeah. So that is so awesome. So I want to switch gears on you just a little bit. These are my fun, my, my little fun questions that I ask at the end. So morning or night person? Morning. I was going to say, I shouldn't even ask you yeah. that. <laughs> There's no way you're a night person. You're like a get yeah. up, get going. There's nothing better than a sunrise. Yeah. Like I'm up at like between five and six, yeah. even on an off day. Like I can't sleep in, like I'm ready to roll. And people are like, by noon, I've like mastered half my day. Exactly. Like it's eight <laughs> o'clock and I'm done. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, I got the afternoon now. So, all right. Um, cat or dog person? Dog. Do you have a dog? Yes. Okay. What's? Franklin. He's a Franklin. French bulldog. Okay. 20 pounds. Cool. That's you have a little one. That's he's a compact so, little guy. That, yeah, I have. We have big dogs. I have a. I have a Catahoula. Yeah. That's like about sixty. We do all rescues. I we Got rescue. It. So yeah, we have yeah. a Catahoula, and then we just rescued a little Brindle pit bull. Super oh, cute, little nice. crazy. She's yeah. like, but I will tell you. Um. So our dog miner that we rescued mm -hmm. died about a year and a half ago. Was fifteen. That dog ran fifty mile or grasslands. That's awesome. Ran the fifty mile. Thor, our Catahoula, he is, he, run for days. yes, he didn't run any races, but that dog could do like a marathon. Like he could run 20, yeah. 30 miles. Cause my husband used to take him out and train with him. He's getting older now, so he can't do as many, but he's been trying to take the little pit bull out. And she's like, she goes out for about three and a half, four miles. And she just sits down. She's like, forget <laughs> it. I'm not doing That's this. Incredible. I love that. yeah, I'm done. Yeah. That's what Franklin will do. When he, if he gets hot. He'll literally just lay down and sprawl. Yeah, that's what he does. She's like a <laughs> frog dog and they just yeah. sit down. Like she's like done. So I'm yeah. like, okay, how many did y'all do? He's like three and a half miles. She was finished. So, all right. And let's see, what's your favorite food? Mm -hmm. A very thick pattied cheeseburger Yum. with avocado and crispy bacon and an egg. Sunny side up. You do low carb, don't you? No. You don't. That's I used all. To. That is all low carb. I do low carb. That is like all low carb. Everything oh no! There's a bunch of sweet potato fries <laughs> oh. <laughs> accompanying that in a nice bun. Yeah. I used to. I, I raced you? when I was racing Ironman. I was yeah. in keto and okay. did all that stuff. I said you just, know because I'm thinking you got the yeah. avocado and the egg and the bacon. Yeah. I'm like that's oh, like a perfect Lord, burger. Let yeah. me get rid of that. Yeah, everything in there. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. It was good stuff in there. So that's cool. All right. If you could be, you know, we probably don't even need this question because you're like your own character. But if you could be any character or like superhero for a day. What would you pick? Wolverine. That's good. I have not. Chris is laughing. We have not had anybody <laughs> say Wolverine at all. You, that was good. <laughs> we haven't had anybody say that. Like yes. I get all different you, ones. Here's the reason why. Because Wolverine, number one, he's Wolverine's a jack dude. And he looks like a badass. And what would be cooler, especially if somebody comes to mess with you or mess with someone around right. you, if you can just look at them and do this and you have like yep. these yeah. claws come out and you go, <laughs> are you sure you want to do right. that? Right. Or <laughs> Good. I have not had anybody say that one. I love it. That's yes. a first for us. And he's got some really rad cars. Yeah. And cool motorcycles. I was, exactly. That's good. Saying. That's good. Wolverine. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So this has been fun. So if our listeners wanted to come check you out, learn mm -hmm. more about what you got going on, where do we send them? Yes. So my website is hunt-prosper.com. Okay. I actually have an online eight-week program that helps you go through fear, that helps you get comfortable with this using language. Um, tomorrow night, I'm actually doing a free Zoom call 
on uh, on building a relationship with fear that will be recorded. So if you'd like to do that as well, you can sign up or you can send me an email mo at hunt prosper.com. Okay. So there is the website. And then for I've on, also on Instagram hunt underscore prosper. And then LinkedIn is just my full name Morris Brosette. And he has cool pictures on Instagram. So go check out the Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> and read the captions yeah. in the Instagram. Because what I, it's, the no, they are were, good. Yeah, they are good. Yeah. The pictures work well with the with the the captions. So you take some really good pictures of that. You're, I like that they're at, there are a lot of action pictures. Yeah. So they're really like you're in that, but, you know. And I do that because I want to show people whether they're executives, working mothers, house moms, athletes, whatever. Yeah. Look, this is about going out. And the reason I have this called Hunt and Prosper is whatever you want, you got to go get it. You got to hunt for it. Right. I want to be the best version of me possible. I want to challenge myself to my breaking point and do things I'm not good at to make myself better. So when I do the tactical games, I'm not good at it right now. I will be. And I, so that's why I do that. That's why I rock climb. So you'll see, you know, yeah. like, wait, you're, you're a mindset coach and executive coach. Why are you doing all these athletic things? Because that's what makes me good at what I do. Because right. when I face my fears and I'm, I'm scared to death of falling off a rock, even though I'm not going to, yeah. I know how to coach you through that meeting you don't want to go talk to. Yeah, no. And you know, it's interesting when I do this podcast, I always love talking to athletes yeah. and, and people that, especially people who've either had to overcome something really big or athletes, mm -hmm. just because I know that if they can do that, they can get through just about anything. Yeah. Like they got that mindset, they can get through anything. So this has been so good. We'll make sure thank when you. we put this out, we'll get all the contact information out there so people can see it. So I want to tell you, thank you so much for jumping on the show, sharing with us. Like I said, we could be here forever. Chris yeah. has got to go home. He's going to be like, y'all just stay there and keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> but um, this has been good. And I do want to say to our listeners, of course, if you love our podcast, please be sure you give us a rating both on iTunes and Facebook because we can't do this without you. And hit the subscribe button on YouTube. And with that, I'm going to leave you guys with a final thought. We learn something from everyone who passes through our lives. Some lessons are painful, some are painless, but all are priceless. All right, you guys take care, be safe, and be kind to one another. We'll see you next time. Um.